course, here on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We've got it quoted to me. We're going to say Happy Mother's Day 11 times. I've now said it twice because I snuck it in there. Uh, happy Mother's Day, indeed. We um, uh, Can I let y'all in? Can I let y'all in behind the curtain? We arrived at church this morning. And, uh, and found that the, um, the internet between the parts of the building wasn't working, the sanctuary organ wasn't working, the sanctuary lights weren't working well. Um, I'm leaving something out. Uh, the PA system in the sanctuary wasn't working. So we've got uh, Ronnie Rufo, our crack on-site engineer, considering um, what, uh, what kind of stuff might have happened. But here's the thing. We've been doing church before there was electricity in downtown Statesboro. Can I get an amen? amen? We've been doing church right here since before, like, you know, any of that stuff was run. So we uh, we trust the Holy Spirit provides the rest. For all those who are uh, who are in the room, there's nobody watching online right now because did I mention the internet's not working? So uh, I wave at the cameras because they're going to post it later on. But, um, but we, we do welcome you here. For those who grab the bulletins on your way in, we, uh, we'd love for you to grab a Connect card and, uh, and fill those out. Drop them in the offering plates, uh, the offering baskets when they come around later in the service. We, um, we do appreciate, mothers, uh, for, for, for all that you've done, <laughs> not just in the present, but uh, can I get an amen for bringing us into the world, right? Uh, and we, we, we've got, um, for, for every woman in the room, we have magnetic scripture uh, uh, gifts so that are in the back. We, we'd love for you to take. If you hadn't grabbed one already, we're giving them away in the back. And we'd, uh, we'd love for you to take those and just uh, use them to encourage you. Uh, I, I, I have, um, by contract, I have to say that Vacation Bible School is coming up. Uh, and, that, uh, and that signing up. Uh, States for a first kids and grandkids has been going on for a week or two, but the public begins to sign up tomorrow. So if you want your spot, then you got to uh, you got to sign up uh, before the spots go away. We of course need um, we need uh, we need adults, men and women. We need teenagers to sign up and help. It's a uh, it's a big ministry where we're spreading good news to that generation that's so precious. Um, I do want to say our, our preschool is looking for new um, staff people, an amazing place, opportunity to serve 105 kids, uh, you know, really year-round. Um, you can read about that in the bulletin. And, uh, and while they're not going to be in this room, I, I think they're worth a mention. We have three people in our church who had birthdays this past week or this coming week of 90 years or more. So it, can, I, can I get a show of hands that that's worth celebrating? Yeah? Yeah, I, I agree. So, uh, Jean Braswell turned 91 last week. Mary Sue Hodges turned 90 yesterday. And Peggy Harrington turns 90 on Tuesday coming up. And so, we're singing happy birthday to him in the sanctuary. Out of the busyness of life, we gather in this place believing that God still speaks. So, on this day, I invite you to join with me as we prepare our hearts for worship and prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we gather here, a part of your community, put before us this, this great cause you have called the church to, to lift up your son, Jesus Christ, to tell the story of salvation, and to invite the world to be a part of it. For all the ways that you are doing that in our lives, we give you the glory, and we ask that this hour would do the same. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. They should stand. Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Please stand up with us this morning and as we open up for the chamber. Shake his 
we uh, we lift up names in our prayers. We uh, we lift up uh, Gene Neal, who uh, had a heart procedure on Friday and is on the men and recovering. We uh, we pray for David Hughes, the husband of Jenny. He's under the care of hospice, and and uh, we want to lift up that family in our prayers. We continue to pray for Nita Waters and Jimmy Franklin, for Edith Jenkins and John Gould, Doug Duggan and Clinky Breedenberg. We pray for Charlie Christmas and Dot Piazza, Earl and Jewel Dabbs and Shirley Cannell, for Gretchen Jackson and Betty Rushing, and for Linda Arnold, who, uh, who is recuperating after uh, also having a heart procedure this past week. Each week we're praying for the people of Ukraine, for the battle that wages there, but, but, uh, but, but more so for their sense of peace and God's assurance with them. We pray each week for healthcare workers and first responders that, that serve and protect our community. We pray for our nation's military and the civilians that support their efforts. And we pray for elected leaders at every level of government. That, that all of these people would be, would be lifted up by the will of God at work in their life. And that they would, they would have the gift of, of knowing that it's God at work in their life. For all of these prayers, I invite you to join with me as we go to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, our prayer this day is one of thanksgiving for the example that your Son Jesus set and for all of those in our lives who have who have also become examples of Christian love, of sacrifice. On this day that we celebrate mothers, we are aware that, that there are some who consider this day, who, who experience this day with some sense of grief, over what could have been or what hasn't been, or over what we've had and have now lost. And yet, this day and every day, we come back to, to the confession of the church, which is has been that of the communion of the saints. That of this connection, even beyond the veil, of all those who are sons and daughters of yours. We bow our heads surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Help us to be examples to those who are watching. Help us to be about bringing your will into the world. And for all the names that we've lifted up, our prayer is for your healing to happen. Our prayer is one of thanksgiving and joy, and we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus, even as we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. At this time, our ushers come forward with the offering baskets to collect our offerings as well as the connect cards. Let's say a prayer over the offering when we take this step. Lord, use these gifts that your work might happen in this place, in this community, and around the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
asking the question, what does it mean to, to identify as a Christian? What, is, what does it mean to be a Christian? What, what does it mean to, to, to put our faith that we, that we sing about and we pray about and we talk about it here? What does it mean to put our faith in work, at work out there? Right? I mean, Jesus, Jesus said, I, I, you know, he, Jesus said, go into all the world and, and make disciples, but he, but he didn't say, go into all the world and, uh, and, and let discipleship stop inside the church. So, so we've had uh, we've had people standing in front of us or, or seated in front of us uh, sharing. A couple weeks ago, Dr. Anna Benson, last week, the children putting it on display, and, I, and I'd like to turn your attention to, uh, to, the, to the video screens as we, uh, as we hear from Mrs. Ida Waters talking about it. Is 
say it isn't so. It's so good. Um, the computer's computer is not moving. Internet's still down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, turn to your neighbor. You got about a minute, minute or so. Turn to your neighbor and say, "What would you do if you were Scott right now?" <laughs> yeah. Um, I would think it's like the other biggest. It's like the other biggest. They didn't play ball with yeah. Like they now got Yeah, try that. Um, advanced degree in computers um, is going to do what uh, what all of us would do, which is if the computer's not working, what do you do? Reboot it. That's exactly right. Oh, it's so smart. She's going to turn it off and see if it works again, and she's going to yell at me when we're ready to try it. Um, but uh, but before that, um, before that, let's read from the Bible. I, I'd like I'd like to tell a story this morning that uh, that 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 would lead us into. To what I believe are our stories. And it's a story straight from the scriptures. I think it's a story you kind of know of, but maybe, maybe we're going to read a couple of passages and connect the dots in a way that make us go, oh. So, so turn with me. We've been reading through the Gospel of Luke. Turn with me to Luke chapter 8. And I'm going to pick up in verses 1, 2, and 3. We, uh, we, we, we know that we know that Jesus has been on the scene for some time. We don't know if it's if it's a few months. We don't know if it's a year. Some scholars believe that, uh, that, that at this point it might have even been over a year. And uh, and he's gathered he's gathered disciples. This is this is before he sent them out. But it says soon after. Jesus traveled through the cities and villages, preaching and proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom. And it says, the twelve were with him, along with some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and then, and then Luke puts in parentheses a, a note from whom seven demons had been thrown out. That's the first. Second is Joanna. He, he points out that's the wife of Herod's servant, Chusa. And then finally, Susanna the third, along with many others who provided for them out of their resources. So, so we don't know the total number. There was a group of women, Mary, Joanna, Susanna, group of women, along with another group of, of unnamed women. And, and, and the, they've been providing, it says, for Jesus and the twelve. For Jesus and the twelve, out of their resources, for, for, for ministry to happen. These, these, these women were committed to, to supporting Jesus and the twelve. The twelve would become apostles. They would become, uh, they would become the, the bedrock of the movement of the Holy Spirit out in the world. They would become what is the church. These women were supporting Jesus and the church. Which is, which is to say, these women, these women had, had put their names, literally, Luke, listen to them. They had, they had put their names down to this movement and said, they, they said, I'm in, I'm signing up. But, but I want to pause around this and say, they were, they were signing up to be a part of the movement, but they were doing it before they knew how it would turn out.
think, 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 think about this. So, I, mean, I, I don't know how many of you, you, you watched the, the little horse race yesterday. If, if you did, like, the horse that was not supposed to win won, right? And, and if you put any money on it and it paid back at 80 to 1, then, um, then the ushers are in the back to take up that offering. Okay. I mean, what would they say that, uh, that they bought that horse for thirty thousand, right? Which is like a used Camry right now. I mean, they bought you know. It, I read the paper at one one point eight six million dollars. They 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 put their name behind something before they knew how it would turn out. That's the ministry of these women. But what's fascinating is it's not the only time that they are mentioned in the scriptures. In fact, in fact um, for, for those who keep up with the church calendar, we are in the season of Easter tide, or just or just Easter for short. We're in the season of Easter. So Easter, Easter starts on the grand day and it continues for the next 50 days until the church celebrates Pentecost. So, so the resurrection of the Savior is one bookend, and the coming of the Holy Spirit to birth the church is the other end. We're in the most glorious 50 days ever. So, so if we go back to that Easter story and, and how it played out, we, we, we find these women again. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up right at the end of that Friday night. It says in Luke 23, verses 50 and following. Now, there was a man named Joseph who was a member of the council. He was a good and righteous man. He hadn't agreed with the plan and the actions of the council. What, what, what council are we talking about? We're, we're talking about the Jewish religious leaders who had, uh, who had, who had conspired with Judas and set up their version of charges against Jesus, and then they had accused him, and then they had turned him over to Pilate, and Jesus was crucified, executed, mistreated terribly over the span of 18, 20 hours. Joseph didn't agree with all that. He was from the Jewish city of Arimathea. Many of you know him as Je Joseph of Arimathea. And, and he eagerly anticipated God's kingdom. It says, this man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb carved out of the rock in which no one had ever been buried. It was the preparation day for the Sabbath, which means this was Friday. And the Sabbath was quickly approaching, which means the sun was going down. Now here it says in verse 55, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph. They saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was laid in it. And then they went away and prepared fragrant spices and perfumed oils. They rested on the Sabbath in keeping with the commandment. These, these are the same women. It's about to name them. These are the same women. These are the same women who said in, 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 in chapter 8, we're going to sign our name to this movement. We're going to, we're going to not just, we're not just going to put our names on the movement. We're not just going to give the movement our time. But we're literally going to write checks to support Jesus and the fledgling star of the church. There were, there were women who said, we don't know how it's going to turn out. But we are for, we are for this thing. We believe in this thing. Before we even know how it's going to turn out. And, and, and I want to pause right here to say... On Friday night, Good Friday night, it didn't look like it was turning out. You go, go back with me a few weeks. But on Good Friday night, he was dead. And they, they literally followed the body to to the graveside service. And they, they kept up. I, 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 yeah, I've been to the cemetery before, and that's, that's the little cave outcropping, and then they rolled it. They, they put their name with it before they knew how it was going to turn out. And, and then, 
And then it wouldn't turn it out. Let me, let me, let me rush to where I'm going and then, and then come back for a second. See, I believe, I believe the Bible tells us that faith is this substance of belief in that which we cannot yet see. And here's a, here's a group of women who, who see something in Jesus and, I don't know why, something in those 12 who were, the Greek word is chuckleheads. <clears throat> they were total chuckleheads. It's not the Greek word. Total chuckleheads. They saw something in them before, before, they, before, before it was with their eyes. They saw something in them and they believed in them and they signed their names to it and they, they put their names to it. And on Friday night, it looks like that that, 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 that wasn't going to pay off. But Luke, Luke moves from Friday night to Sunday morning. Just no sentences between. It's, it's Luke chapter 24, verse 1. It says, very early in the morning on the first day of the week. So, so we left them on Friday and now it's Sunday. The women went to the tomb bringing the fragrant spices that they had prepared. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing there beside them in gleaming, bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And in my Bible, that, that's in quotes, because the angel is quoting what Jesus had said. And then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and the others. And then Luke, in, in I mean, it's just perfect bow on it. Luke, in verse 10, says, it was Mary Magdalene. Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. This, this is the word of God for we the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. So, I, I have never read the Easter story like, like, like I have this week. When I read that the women who put their support behind Jesus in the 12, who, who believed in the movement before they knew how it was going to turn out, that, that, that as a reward for their faithfulness, they were literally given the front row seats. on the greatest day in history. Is this not what it means to be a mother? To believe in someone before you know how they'll turn out. To, to say, you know what? I'm going to put my name beside theirs. I don't know what's going to come of it, but I am going to support them. Is, is, this not, is this not what every single one of us received from our mothers? for you, even when you've done things that I did not approve of, and I do not want you to do it again, and therefore I'm going to take all these things away from you. I am for you. I am Mothers and fathers 
mothers who believe in their children before they know how they're going to turn out, I mean, they are putting on display for us the essence of the gospel, the stuff of faith. Jesus says, in John chapter 13, verse 35, this is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. What is the church to do with this storm? Except, except to receive it as affirmation and encouragement. For every mother and father and adult and neighbor and Sunday school teacher, for everyone in the church who has believed in someone else before you knew how they would turn out, can, can I get an amen, Becca? You, you guys, with small group leaders, every Wednesday night, you have this amazing group of small group leaders, and, and, and Jody the same with the children's ministry, but every Wednesday night, we're, we're just piling, piling students in the building. And can I also get an amen? We have no idea how those kids are going to turn out. I mean, in some of them right now, it's super sketchy. It is, you're laughing. They're your kids. Okay? I mean, I mean, Lord, yeah, super sketchy. And, you're, and your people show up anyway. This is the gospel. So be affirmed every time you do this and be encouraged because, because that kind of faithfulness gets you the front row seat. For when the glory of the Lord is put on display, Well done to, to everyone who puts their name and their support and gives their life to support someone before they know how they're going to turn out. Let's, let's pray. Our, our prayer is gratitude for we have, we have been recipients of the grace of that this story speaks of. We, we have been cared for by others who put their names and given it all on our behalf. So Lord, Lord, our prayer is that we would, we would do unto others as we have already received. that we would be a church that lives with that kind of faith. That we would be a people whom the world sees as, as, as putting faith into work, as putting love on display. For all the ways that you have blessed us, we return thanks in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand and sing with us. Your grace is enough. Raise your faithfulness, O oh God.
church's website, statesboroughfirst.com. I think it's already there, but maybe give it two hours until after lunch and go check for it. If you click on media, listen, this is work, all right? Don't y'all, like, start head away from Freeze. If you click on media and then search and type in waters, you're going to be blessed by an incredible testimony by Miss Ida. It's, it's, you, you, you just basically, I'm telling you, you have to go watch it. Go watch it and, and hear and hear her story and uh, how God has worked for her through her. When, and, 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 and she's so honest. She's like, yeah, sometimes I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And yet God delivers. So go in the grace and peace of the one who is for us before he knows how it's going to turn out for us because he knows how it's going to turn out for the world. Peace. <laughs> 